Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you how to upgrade the SSD and the RAM inside the 2019 Mac Pro. Hey Cafe Crew, Colin Smith here from Photoshop Cafe and today I'm going to be upgrading my 2019 Mac Pro and we're going to be adding some RAM and SSD. So why don't we start with the SSD? So one of the questions people have been asking, does it support the NVMe? And yes, it does. And today we're going to be putting in the 970 Evo Plus Samsung. This is one terabyte and this cost me $200. You could get two terabytes for $400 if you want. And of course, I'm going to put links to all this gear underneath. So here's the thing. You need an M.2 uh, connector in order to do this. Now, the M.2 inside of here is a special Apple proprietary one. So the SSD that comes with the Apple, you can't really do that yourself. You have to actually take it in and then so they have to enable the T2 chip to change it out. Now, we can install our own, of course, on the logic board. But what we need is an adapter. And I have one right here. And this adapter goes into a PCI Express slot. And this has and M.2 on it. So the M.2 connector is right here. So let's upgrade it right now. So the first thing we need to do is we need to put the drive onto this card. So one thing very important is before you do any of this work, be aware of static electricity. Your body can pass through static electricity, you know, kind of like when you rub your feet against carpet and then you grab the comb and your hair stands on end. This is enough to fry microchips. So what you want to do is make sure that, you know, you ground yourself, Obviously, this is not plugged in, so the metal frame is not going to ground me right now. Um, but what you want to do is, you know, if you can, you know, have an anti-static mat, even have an anti-static wristband and have it attached to something that's grounded. Um, but just be careful not to touch the chips. So handle the cards by the edges and avoid touching any of the chips and you should be fine. OK, so the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to just take this card out here and we're going to put it down. And I'm just going to lie it on the static bag. So they come with these plastic bags here, which are anti-static bags, which resist static electricity. You don't want to take them off and then just put them onto a surface because you could damage them. All right, so let's take out the card here. Oh, by the way, this adapter is like $15, I think, or $25. I'll, I'll put the link to that underneath. So let's get out our 970 Evo Plus. And of course, this is one terabyte. And that's it there. So we're just going to pop that open. And what we need to do is we need to attach it to this card and then just carefully handling it by the edges. And if you look in here, the card actually slots in. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that card and then we're just going to slot it in there. I'm just going to load it on the end of the screwdriver. There we go. Just get it tight. You don't have to swing on it and strip the thread or anything like that. In fact, don't over tighten it. You could damage it. All right. So that's ready to go. And of course, all we need to do is just turn this half a turn. And then the lid's just going to pop right off. So what we're going to do is just loosen these off. And then we can just take these, this little bar off. And so now this gives us access. So I'm going to use number five, which is an X16 slot. And then we're just going to pop this out. It just sits on the back there, fills up the hole. So we're going to take our card, even though it's got slightly different uh, length here, it doesn't matter as long as this is properly seated in here. So we're going to take this, okay, there we go, and that's properly seated all the way in. That's good. Great. And all we need to do is just take this, pop it back on, close these out, and I'm just going to do them hand tight. There's no need to go with the screwdriver and tighten it up. All right, so we just need to go into the system now to initialize this. And now we've got another terabyte on the inside. Cost me $200. 
First thing we want to do is just verify that it's in there. So let's just go up under the Apple menu and we're going to choose about this Mac. And we're going to choose PCI cards and we can see there we go. There is our card properly installed here. It's not showing any issues, which is great. All right, so we need to initialize that drive. So what we do is we go up under go and just check on your, click on your desktop to bring that up. And then we're going to choose utilities and then we're going to grab the disk utility. Or you could just command spacebar for search and then just type in disk utility. And here we go. And here's our second drive. Yeah, I've actually already named it, but I'll just go through the process again. So what we do is you'll just select your drive here and then just choose erase. And then you could set it up at this case, I'm going to set it up as APFS. You could also choose uh, Mac journaled. There we go. And we're done. Let's see how fast this is. Let's do a disk speed test and start that speed test. This is what we're getting with the SSDs that came with it. All right, and if we have a look here and we're gonna change the target drive to our drive that we put in, Mac 2. Let's open this and start the speed test. And if you look at this, it's actually running faster than the internal drive that came with it. And to show you how fast these are both working, I've got this uh, folder here, which is almost 10 gigabytes, nine and a half gigabytes. And watch how fast this copies over. Done. That is fast. All right, let's look at upgrading the RAM. I've got some 2933 RAM here and there's no special Apple RAM. In fact, they use Nemix, which is the same brand here that I have. And I've got 64 gigs. So there's two 32 gig DIMMs here. And this cost me 200 bucks. And if you were to buy that from Apple, you'd be looking at about $1,000. So I got this one with 48 gigs in here and I'm gonna upgrade it to 112 gigs. So 200 bucks, I think is pretty good. Now, the thing you've got to realize when you get the RAM is make sure that it's the same speed as what's in here. You don't want to mix and match speeds. Uh, this is a 12 core processor, so this can do the 2933. If you have the eight core processor, you can still use this RAM. It's just going to run a little bit slower. So the 12 core and up are going to get the full speed out of the RAM and make sure your RAM is ECC or error corrected RAM. And uh, let's have a look and see what we've got here. So we're going to pull these two dims out and I'm keeping these on the anti-static uh, plastic here, the bag because you don't want to touch these chips. You don't want to get any static electricity on there or fry them and they will be useless. So what we need to do is just open up these two RAM cartridges. So we're just going to pop these open like that and then they just lift straight out. Now you want to make sure you put these covers back on when you're finished because these actually help with the cooling. All right, so notice I've already got six in here. So it supports different configurations. It supports configurations of four, six, eight, or 12 um, DIMMs in here, and there's 12 slots in here. Now we need to change these around because these ones in here are eight gig, and we're gonna be adding two 32 gigs in there, and that's fine. We can mix and match like that as long as we keep them in pairs. And the way we need to set them up is where it goes from the smallest capacity to the largest capacity. So what we're gonna do is just pop these open. Of course, if you're using, um, if you've got four DIMMs in here and you're just gonna be replacing them with the two, these ones here, you're, gonna, you're just gonna put them in these slots. It's a different configuration, however, if we're gonna put in eight. So what we're gonna need to do here is pop these open. And then we're just gonna lift these out carefully by the edges, not touching the chips. Go in there, push it down, and you're gonna feel it click and you wanna hear it click on both sides. You don't need to close that, that'll do it by itself. Same thing here, let's grab these carefully, pull them out, drop them in, and because these are all the same capacity, we're good. 
Okay, so you wanna make sure that you don't mix and match the types of RAM as well. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna close these up. And what we're gonna do is put our RAM on the outside. So I'm gonna take my first DIMM. And you'll notice that if I look at it, it can only go in one way. And just put that in there carefully. Click, click. And you'll hear those clicks. Make sure everything is properly seated. And by the way, on the inside here, this shows how you can do the configurations. This is the 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12. So if I wanted to add two more in there, I could. Or if I wanted to add four more in there, I could, as long as they're matched in pairs and they're the same type of RAM and also the same speed. The capacity can be different. All right, so I'm just going to put these cases back on. They just snap in. Very simple. All right. So let's take this. You put it down, you hear it seal, make sure it's seated. Turn that half a turn, done. So looking at the memory, we're gonna go under the Apple menu about this Mac. And we can see here, there's 112 gigs in here. And if we go into memory, you can see there's the slots there. And you can see I've still got four more slots, so I could add two more or I could add four more if I wanted to add more RAM um, for a lot less money. It costs about $1,000 to add this 64 gigs if you get it from Apple. And like I said, I got this for 200 bucks. And when we run a benchmark, this is our Nova bench before I put the RAM in. And that's 2834. Let's run Nova bench now with the RAM in. Okay, and here we go. This is the difference. And if we look at this before and after, we went from 2834 up to 2922. And the RAM, of course, went from 273 up to 323. And the specs on the Mac, it's the 2019 Mac Pro. It's a 12 core Xeon W with 3.3 gigahertz. It's now 112 gigs of RAM. Now that I have this and I have the 16 inch MacBook Pro, my goal is to be done with USB-A. So I got this thumb drive, I went on Amazon and I found it, and no, I'm not sponsored by Samsung, but it just happened to be a Samsung Duo drive. It's 128 gigs, um, it came in at like, I don't know, 20 bucks or something, it wasn't very expensive, um, and has a USB-C on here. But the nice thing about this is on the back of it, if you pull that back, it will adapt into a USB-A in case you need it. So if you are mixing and matching with different machines that don't support it, you have that ability. So I am on a mission. USB-C, Thunderbolt 3 all the way. It's so much faster and easier to use. So anyway, guys, I hope you found this video useful. Don't forget to check out my other videos I've got. I've got the unboxing and setup of this, and then I've got another one where I do a speed test. And so I take this one here, which has the 32 gig video card. I put it up against the one with the base level eight gig video card. And then I also compare it with the 16 inch MacBook Pro as well as the old trash can Mac. So have a look at that. And you know, if you like these kind of videos, which are kind of like tech review slash tutorials, hit the subscribe button, become part of the cafe crew, and you'll get a new video from me every single week. So anyway, guys, if you like this, smash the like button into dust and once again, I'll put the links for all this gear I've been using in here and the comments underneath. Until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.